What's up guys, today we are partnered up with Sagamore Spirit to bring you an episode on rye whiskey cocktails. And we're gonna be using three different expressions of rye whiskey, including the Sagamore Spirit Signature Rye Whiskey. You know, I think that rye really gets short shrift in the whiskey world because it's overshadowed by its more famous cousin, bourbon. But without rye, which is America's first whiskey, mind you, bourbon likely wouldn't exist. When I first entered the world of cocktailing and got a proper introduction to rye, I fell in love. Where bourbon can be at times overly sweet, Rye has a dry spice that tempers the sweetness of the whiskey, and it makes for a very complex flavor profile. Maybe even more so than bourbon at times. It is also very forgiving in cocktails. So what makes a whiskey rye? If you're familiar with the rules surrounding bourbon, those for rye are basically the same. For a whiskey to be labeled straight rye, it must be at least 51% rye in its mash bill, and then the remaining 49% can be other grains. It has to be aged in new charred oak barrels, distilled to no more than 160 proof, entered into the barrel at no more than 125 proof, and bottled at no less than 80 proof. And when it comes to cocktails, again, bourbon overshadows rye at almost every turn. Even cocktails traditionally made with rye, such as Old Fashions and Manhattans, can be more often found with a bourbon base these days. We absolutely do not give this complex whiskey enough play, but that, my friends, is beginning to change, and Sagamore Spirit is going to be at the head of the chart. Sagamore Spirit is a Maryland-based rye whiskey brand, and they are bringing back the Maryland-style rye, which I am absolutely excited about. So today, we're doing a few simple, refreshing, hot weather drinks featuring rye. Let's get into it. So for our first cocktail, we're gonna be doing an old cocktail from uh, Harry Craddock, which was first published in the Savoy Cocktail Book in 1930. It's called a rattlesnake. It has egg white, it has absinthe, it is awesome. Let's do it. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is grab our tin and set it aside, because that's what we do. I'm gonna take a lemon, we're gonna cut it up. Three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. Three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. I think this cocktail goes really well with a higher proof spirit, so we're gonna be doing the Sagamore cask strength. We're going to be doing a full two ounces of Sagamore cask strength. Now that I've warmed this egg up, it's a nice warm egg white. All right, I'm going to crack it. I did not crack this well today. Oh yeah. Ah, it's all over me. Combine these guys and give it a shake. All right, we're going to take our absinthe and we're going to give it a nice rinse. I really like to have it in an atomizer because you get a nice even coat. All right, add our ice there, and give it a shake. All right, I heard a little breakage in there. To garnish, we are just going to give it a little lemon twist. All right, let's give it a taste. Ooh, yummy and frothy. Ooh, very lemony. It's not very burny because the egg white really smoothed it out. So you get all those barrel notes from the rye, you get that kind of dry spice on top of just like a lemon sour, and you get a little tiny dribble drabble of absinthe on the back palate. That's beautiful, I like it. Mmm, I could drink four of those. Yummy, the rattlesnake. The next cocktail we're doing today is called a Quaker, which is another one from Harry Craddock's Savoy Cocktail Book 1930. We cannot get enough of this guy's cocktails today. You're gonna recognize the ingredients right off the bat, and it's fantastic. So grab our tin, three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, three quarters of an ounce of raspberry syrup. Now, technically this cocktail calls for simple syrup and five muddled raspberries, but I have this beautiful raspberry syrup that I just made. So for this cocktail, we wanna use something a little bit less high octane, so we're gonna be using the Sagamore Spirit Signature Rye Whiskey. One ounce of the Sagamore rye, one ounce of cognac, add some ice to the tin, there we are, cocktail. Give it a nice eight to ten second shake. Ooh, that's got some nice foam. There it is, the Quaker, let's taste it. Ooh, it's too, too full. Mmm. Surprisingly, the raspberryness is not lost in that cocktail. Lemon, most prominently up front. It's balanced, obviously, with the sugar. You get a little back palate raspberry. You get the unmistakable dry rye spice. And the cognac providing a lilt, a little lilt of barrel-aged sweetness. That's good. Ooh, I could crush these. There you go. Crushable. 
The next cocktail we're doing is, well, it's the simplest cocktail we've done in a really long time. Uh, it's called a Whiskey Apple Highball, and it was originated at the Shady Pines Saloon in Sydney, Australia around 2010. I gotta say that this cocktail really has to be made a la minute because it, the crux of it really relies on freshly pressed apple juice. Uh, we're gonna be doing Granny Smith apples, and if you know anything about apple juice, it oxidizes incredibly quickly. It changes color, it changes flavor. I mean, I guess you could put a little ascorbic acid into your apple juice to preserve it, but I wouldn't suggest doing that. So just juice some fresh if you're gonna make this cocktail. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is juice some apple. Cold pressing apple juice today. One ounce of the Sagamore Double Oak Rye. Four ounces of apple juice. Add some ice, give it a little stir. Let's taste it. I think that's one of the best things I've ever tasted. Right. And it doesn't taste like anything more complex than just Granny Smith apple juice, which is a little bit sweet and a little bit acidic, but not overly so, and rye whiskey. And when it's the double rye, you're getting a bunch of that oak coming through, and it's just it's just a match made in heaven. It's really nice. I'm a big fan of that. I can see why that became a modern classic. So there you have it, the whiskey apple highball. The Ward 8 is a rather problematic bourbon classic cocktail that we've done in the show, and it's pretty good, but it's one of those classic drinks that is ripe for bartenders to come and respec. So today we're doing a respec from a San Francisco bartender named Chad Arnholt, who developed it for the Tin Roof drinks community in, of course, San Francisco. All right. I have high hopes for this one, you guys. Half an ounce of lemon juice. We are gonna cut in a quarter ounce of orange juice. Three quarters of an ounce of grenadine. We're gonna be doing an ounce and three quarters Sagamore rye. A little icy poo in here. Give it the old shake. And then give it to the old strainy pants. Mmm. Hello, cocktail. Wow. That little quarter ounce of orange juice really kicks this thing up. That is nice. It's a little more complex than his bourbon counterpart. The most thing that you taste is the grenadine at three quarters an ounce and of course the rye at one and three quarters. You get just enough acidity from the lemon juice and you get a little pop of orange and a little pop more sugar and a little, little tiny dribble drabble, little dab, extra citric acid in there. And you have this really nice cocktail. It is way more complex than I thought it would be. It is a nice step up from the original. And I think rye whiskey does this cocktail a little bit better because instead of that like weird caramel vanilla sweetness that you get with bourbon, you get that dry rye spice. And you still get those caramel notes. You still get those vanilla notes. They're a little bit more muted. And that you get that nice, you know, that dry rye, the dry rye thing that I've been talking about this entire video. So there you have it. Chad Arnholtz, Ward 8. So there it is guys, that's a wrap on our rye whiskey cocktails. And I just wanna say a little bit about rye whiskey and then about Sagamore and then I'll leave you guys alone. Ever since I was introduced to rye when I, early on in my career, it has really overtaken bourbon as my American whiskey of choice. Not only is it the first whiskey that we were making in this country, but it also just has this really nice, you know, kind of juxtaposition between spicy, malty, you feel the grain in there a little bit more than you would in bourbons. And then also you get the sweetness. You get those caramel notes. You get those vanilla notes that you get in bourbons because of the aging process being so close to its more famous cousin. I recently got to tour the Sagamore Farm and look at their production, look at their distillery, taste a lot of their ex expressions. And I'm really impressed by the way that they're bringing back that Maryland style rye. They're really digging deep into their history. They're trying to make ryes that are very indicative of that place. It is just a time in American whiskey history that we don't really think about because everyone is so focused on bourbon. So I think that you guys should take the time to try their whiskey, check out their website, uh, dig deep into Maryland rye. I think you guys will be opening up a Pandora's box of awesomeness. That's all I got to say. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I'll see you guys next week.